And now it's time to talk about the Part 135 alternate requirements. Section 135.223 tells us that an alternate is not required if there is at least one available and authorized standard instrument approach procedure at the first airport of intended landing and appropriate weather reports and or forecasts, again, as reasonably interpreted by a knowledgeable pilot, indicate that from at least one hour before until at least one hour after the estimated time of arrival, the ceiling will be at least 1,500 feet above the lowest circling approach MDA or 2,000 feet above the ground, whichever is higher. And the visibility will be at least two statute miles more than the lowest applicable visibility minimum, or three statute miles, whichever is greater. This is generally similar to the 123 rule of 91169, but it is slightly more restrictive. The mins will never be less than 2003, but they will sometimes be more than 2003. Here are the three most common mistakes I see when giving recurrent knowledge tests to Part 135 line pilots on this subject area. First, they almost always forget that ceilings are universally, always, by definition, AGL. There is no such thing as an MSL ceiling. No such thing. If you were flying into an airport in Colorado and the airport elevation was 5,000 feet and there was an overcast layer 200 feet above the ground, the report would not say that the ceiling was 5,200 feet. That wouldn't make any sense. Accordingly, when deriving a ceiling using 135.223, make sure you always look at the AGL value. That's the HAA, or height above airport. Not the MDA, which is the MSL, minimum descent altitude. In order to do the arithmetic and derive a ceiling, You've always got to use an AGL number. You've got to add apples to apples and oranges to oranges. Now, incidentally, as a side note, the difference between an HAA, that's height above airport, and an HAT, that's height above touchdown, is simply the difference between a straight in and a circling procedure. When we talk about circling mins, we refer properly to the HAA, not the HAT. Now, the second very common mistake is when deriving visibility, it doesn't have to be a circling approach. It can be anything at that airport that is available and authorized. And third, the time frame is always from at least one hour before until at least one hour after your estimated time of arrival, just exactly the same as it is under 91169. Okay, let's do an example of that. Here we have an airport with two approaches. We've got a localizer to 7, we've got a VOR to 1-3, and these are the MIMS. Now remember, we need AGL, not MSL. We're looking for the HAA, the height above airport. So we're going to find the lowest circling value, and that's 657, which we are then going to round up to 700. Now we're rounding this up to 700 because ceilings are always reported and forecast in hundreds of feet. It will always be 200, 300, 400, 500. You're never going to see a ceiling reported or forecast as 256 or 824. Now we're going to add 1,500 to that, which gives us 2,200. Now we're going to take the lowest applicable visibility minimum and in this case, that is two and a half. Now we're going to add two to two and a half. Which gives us four and a half. Therefore, we need a 2,200 foot ceiling and four and a half statute miles of visibility forecast to exist from at least one hour before until at least one hour after our estimated time of arrival in order to not have to designate an IFR alternate. And remember, if this process gives you less than 2,000, use 2,000. If it gives you less than 3, use 3. The answer will never be less than 2,003, but it will often be more, as we've just seen.